usually a community garden is started because there are people in the community that don't have access to a spot where they can grow their own fruits and vegetables. So the community garden is first and foremost a place where they can have their own plot and grow some produce that they otherwise wouldn't have access to. Another reason that a community garden may be developed is because a community may have an empty lot or an unused parcel of land that is attracting crime or trash or other problems and they want to reclaim it and make something useful out of it. So a community garden can uh, provide benefits in making the community a better place to live. A community garden, beyond just being a place to grow food, can also quickly become a place where community relationships will develop. Neighbors that maybe never talk to each other or people from different cultures that have never uh, really gotten to know each other can, through a community garden, share an experience and work together on a project that will make the community more tight-knit and allow them to deal with other issues that may come up. A great side effect of a community garden in a neighborhood is, of course, the additional fresh produce, which the neighbors may not have access to in other situations. So they would see health benefits from increased produce in their diets, especially fresh produce, but also just getting out and gardening, being outside. Some of the physical activity that's innate in gardening will have some health benefits as well. Sometimes a community, rather than growing vegetables just for themselves, may decide to start a garden where everyone works together and the produce is donated to a food pantry or a soup kitchen or just to neighbors in need rather than uh, being grown just for the individual gardener's use. There are many reasons and benefits to starting a community garden, but each community really needs to assess their own strengths and needs before they just go out and start a community garden. This was a targeted area for us because of the high crime. And we wanted to uh, have a project where we could bring in community people and uh, community police officers, uh, social service agencies all in one spot together so that we could come together, create a presence in the neighborhood, and hopefully reduce crime. The benefits have been we've been sharing information with each other. We've had a lot of elderly, particularly Hispanic people in the neighborhood say that their grandkids don't know how to grow anything and they want to teach them. And so we've had some grandparents here teaching their grandkids, teaching their great nieces and nephews. The main thing, I guess for me, the greatest benefit is is visiting with the people that walk by. Most of our gardeners live within eight blocks of this garden. And so they're here frequently. Most, you know, every night there's at least a few gardeners here and in the morning, at least that's when I come in the morning. So there are usually a few gardeners here. I have picked over 120 cucumbers off of my little trellis. I know that there have been lots of yellow squash, not very many tomatoes, nobody has very many tomatoes this year. Lots of peppers. We have 20 different kinds of peppers planted in this garden. Uh, we have sweet potatoes, which is kind of a communal thing. We planted sweet potatoes to share. And, uh, oh gosh, we have winter squash. We have corn, attempting corn. Hopefully next year our soil will even be in better shape and we'll, we'll have more production. For more information, visit your local Extension office or visit our website at kansasgreenyards.org.